as we talk about transforming HR, one of the mistakes that often happens is we do one little thing and we assume it's an HR transformation. Companies love what's called best practices. So if a company is doing eight or nine different things, we take one and we say, we've stolen their best practice and we've implemented it and it's worked. Here's a lesson learned, it's not true. A best practice from a company doesn't work. What you need is a best system. And if you pull one practice out of that system without managing the whole system, the practice may not be implemented well. HR transformation is the same. What sometimes happens in HR transformation is somebody will take one practice. We'll do EHR. We'll do employee shared services. We'll do an HRIS system with PeopleSoft, with Oracle, with SAP, and we've transformed HR. Not true. What we want to do in this book is to give you the entire roadmap of what good HR transformation looks like. We believe there's four phases. Phase one is why. Why are we doing HR transformation? HR transformation is done to better respond to a business context. The context has general environmental conditions, political, social, economic, global, demographic, that change the world in which we live. Context also has specific stakeholders, investors, customers, regulators, suppliers, competitors, uh, union groups. These stakeholders and these general conditions give me the rationale as to why we should do HR transformation. If we're doing HR transformation, the first piece of that agenda is answering why. The second phase and the second piece of the agenda is so what? We, so what? What do we get if we do HR transformation? The what question begins to define the outcomes. What are the benefits of the transformation? We've defined that very clearly. The benefits of an HR transformation are the capabilities that a company needs to compete and win. And by capabilities, we mean what the company is good at doing. Apple, Google are good at innovation. Walmart is good at cost. Nokia is good at global distribution. General Electric is good at building their leadership depth. UPS, Federal Express are very good at accountability. Whatever the organization needs to be good at and known for, that becomes the outcome of an HR transformation. Phase one is why we do it. Phase two is what we get from why we do it. Phase three is the one that gets a lot of attention. How do we do transformation? And there's three parts of that. Part one of how do we do it is how do we change the HR department? An HR department needs a structure, a strategy, so that it can deliver against the expectations. We want to transform HR and build a good HR department. HR also means the set of HR practices, the people we hire, the performance management systems we have, the communication systems we have, and the organization we structure. HR also means the department, the practices, and the people in HR. When we do HR transformation, how we do that is to make sure that our department is organized and focused on the right things, that our practices are aligned and integrated and innovative, and that our HR people have the competencies for their future. And then phase four is who does it. Who does it talks about who has what responsibilities. Line managers are often the owners. They're the ones accountable ultimately for transformation. HR professionals are the architects to really take and take the lead at designing transformation. The employees are the recipients. The consultants, advisors are the counselors. All of those people come together. Our overall model of HR transformation is very simple. Why are we doing it? What's the context? What do we get if we do it well? That's the outcomes. How do we do it? The department, the practices, and the people. And who does it? the line managers, the employees, and the HR professionals. When all of those phases come together, we have begun to effectuate a successful HR transformation.